so magnetism questions from the past paper question 26 a student wishes to use a magnetizing coil to make a permanent magnet for a piece of metal from a piece of metal which metal should be used to make a permanent magnet? To make a permanent magnet. If you use iron, it will be electromagnet means it will be magnetized. Once we are passing a current and once we like if we stop the current, it will be demagnetized. So steel is a right answer. Question 27. Magnetic materials are always attracted. It is independent what pole they are facing. So for question 27. Look, a metal rod X and Y is placed near a magnet and X is attracted when it is placed. So if it is attracted, so what pole will be there? It means the south pole will be there and at Y it is not. But if we, we bring the same metal pole X close to the south pole, that is also attracted. So it means that become north and this is south. So it shows it is, it is not a magnet, it is a magnetic material. And magnetic materials are always attracted. It is independent of what pole they are facing. The magnetic materials are always attracted towards the magnet. If it was a permanent magnet, like how we'll know whether it's a permanent magnet, when we bring towards North Pole, if it is attracted, when we bring the same end towards the South Pole, so it should be repelled. But it is not happening, it is attracted both cases, so it shows it's a magnetic material. And magnetic materials are always attracted, so it is independent which pole they are facing. Like even I place a Y here near the North Pole or I place a Y near the South Pole, it will also attract. Because the opposite pole will be induced to make it attract. So there is a difference between a permanent magnet and a magnetic material. Magnetic material for them induced magnetism happen and they are always attracted by a magnet. If it's a permanent magnet, then one side will be attracted and the other side will be repelled. That's why A is a right answer for this. Question 34. The diagram shows a solenoid connected to a sensitive voltmeter. Which of the following would give a zero reading on the voltmeter? The change in the idea, the concept is uh, electromagnetic induction. The change in a magnetic field induces EMF. So basically, if we want zero voltage, we don't want the magnetic field to change. So A is the right answer for this. Hold the magnet stationary inside. If we keep the magnet stationary, this, this will have no change in the magnetic field. And if there is no change in the magnetic field, there is no induced EMF. Moving the magnet, there will be a change or moving a solenoid. There will also be a change in the magnetic field. According to electromagnetic induction, if there is no change in the magnetic field, there is no induced EMF. 
if there is a change in the magnetic field there is induced emf so voltage and current will produce question 35 the diagram shows a transformer with alternating voltage of 100 volt applied to a primary what is the voltage across a secondary you can use the formula vs over vp is equals to ns over np this is np this one is vp this is ns and we need vs even without calculation you can tell the answer roughly identify the answer as you can see primary is having 40 turns and secondary is having 80 turns so means it is a step up transformer so output voltage should be higher so a and b cannot be an answer so you're left with c or d when you substitute the value in place of np you write 40 80 and that multiply by 2 so that's why c is a right answer the step up transformer input voltage is low and the output voltage is high. This is a transformer. You have the form this. This is an input voltage we call VP. Number of turns of primary called NP number of turns of secondary called ns and voltage of the secondary is called vs the formula is vs over vp equals ns over np vs is a voltage of secondary which we don't know vp is a voltage of the primary which is 100 number of turns of secondary are 80 and number of turns of primary are 40. this 100 is divided other side it will multiply This is not a step down transformer, it is a step up transformer. Step up means it will increase the voltage. So this will be 80 divided by 40 multiplied by 100. So when 80 multiplied by 100 divided by 40, you will get 200. So you can see the input voltage was 100, but the output voltage is 200. So it means this is a step up transformer, which increases the voltage. So step up transformer increases the voltage number of turns of secondary are more so it cannot be a or b so you're left with option c and d and when you substitute the value you will find that c is a right answer Question 27. How can a permanent magnet be demagnetized? There are three ways to demagnetize heating, hammering, or passing AC and gradually take the magnet out. Hit the magnet repeatedly with hammer that will demagnetize. Question 28. An electromagnet is used to separate the magnetic metals from non-magnetic metals. Why is steel unsuitable as a core of electromagnet? So basically what we do in a magnetic separation, we have both magnetic and non-magnetic materials. So using the electromagnet, electromagnet means it behave like a magnet when we are passing a current. 
so when we are passing a current magnetic materials will be attracted and once all are attracted we will move to the other side and switch off the supply the current so now it will be demagnetized once it is demagnetized all the non magnet all the magnetic material will fall as they are demagnetized but if it was steel steel is a permanent mag material which will be permanently magnetized that's why it will not be suitable for this purpose magnetic separation if we use a permanent magnet then what happen we have to like example if i i'm using a permanent magnet then the magnetic material magnetic material will be attracted then we how to remove these material we have to remove by ourselves but the advantage of electromagnet that once we switch off the current it will be demagnetized and the material will be removed by itself from the magnet Question 35, a straight wire carrying a current produces a magnetic field. Which diagram shows the correct shape of the magnetic field? A current is downward, so you will use a right hand grip rule. Which one is a correct statement uh, uh, figure for showing the direction of the magnetic field of a straight wire? A is totally wrong because A is for a permanent magnet, B is also a magnetic field of a magnet, C is like an electric field. The correct answer is D. How D is the correct answer? Using a right hand grip rule, your thumb represents the direction of the current and your fingers will turn around it so it will be a circular magnetic field lines around it. A student carry out an experiment to see the effect of magnetic field on a wire carrying current. The wire moves upward. What should the student do to make the wire move downward? So direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the current both affects the direction of force the wire experience. If we change any one of them, then the direction of the force will also change. Using a Fleming's left hand rule, we can find the direction of the force. For example, if we change the direction of either current or we change the direction of the magnetic field, that will change the direction of the force. If we change both of them, then the direction of the force does not change. The force experienced by a wire placed in a magnetic field depends on the direction of the current, depends on the direction of the magnetic field. So what should the student do to make a wire move downward? So we want to change, to change the direction of the force. If we change the direction of the current, you can apply a rule here. Like example, if I change the direction of the current, So if you apply a Fleming's left hand rule, your first, first finger, index finger represent the magnetic field, the second finger represent direction of the current and your thumb when you will find, you it will point downward. So if you change the direction of the current, the direction of the force will change. 
or if we change the direction of the poles the direction of the force will also change but if we change both of them then the force will remain same a is the correct answer move the poles of a magnet closer that will change the intensity of the force the strength of the force but not the direction say the smaller current that will also change the magnitude of the force but not the direction using a stronger magnet again that will change the direction that will change the strength of the force but not the direction so only a will change the direction of the force Question 26. Which material is used for core of electromagnet? A repetition, a same question repeated again. So iron is used for making electromagnet and steel is for the permanent magnets. The permanent magnets are made up of steel and the electromagnet or the temporary magnets are made up of iron. A brass rod is positioned in east-west direction and the plotting compass is placed and this is the direction of earth's magnetic field. Which diagram shows the position of a needle of a plotting compasses? Question 27. What could be the answer? Look, the correct answer for this question is A. Why A is the correct answer? What is this? Brass rod. Brass is not a magnetic material. You have iron, steel, nickel and cobalt. These are the magnets. Brass is a non-magnetic material. If this was a permanent magnet, then one side is north and south. So how the compass needle will point? In this manner. But because this is a non-magnetic material, non-magnetic material, it will not affect the compass needle. So the compass needle will point according to the earth's magnetic field. That is why A is a right answer for this. The compass needle is affected by the magnetic field, but brass is not producing any magnetic field. That is why it does not affect the compass needle. So it will point in the same as the direction of earth's magnetic field. Which graph shows the output voltage from a simple AC generator? AC generator or alternating current generator, the current continuously changes. So D is the right answer. These are all direct current. This is also DC. This is DC. This is also DC. This is called a constant DC. This is called a half wave DC. And this is called a full wave DC. But all are DCs direct current. The only is ACs. AC means it is continuously changing direction, positive and negative. The terminal of the battery or the source will also change.
Question 35, a transformer has 50 turns. So you have the on its primary. So NP is given and 100 turns on its secondary. So NS is there 100. An AC voltage of 250 volts. So this is VP. You need VS. And from this figure, you can clearly identify that the secondary is having more turns. So it is a step up transformer. So what could be the right answer? When you substitute the values, the formula is Vs over Vp equals Ns over Np. Voltage of the secondary, we don't know. Voltage of the primary is 25. Number of the turns of secondary are 100 and number of turns of primary 50. 100 divided by 52 and 2 multiplied by 25. So that's 50 is the right answer. Two circuits are set up as shown. The rod X is placed together and free to move. What happened to the size of a gap X and Y when switch S is closed? You have to use a concept of a right hand grip rule to identify the poles produced. Like this is a positive terminal and negative. When we close the switch, the current will pass like this. Now, using a right hand grip rule, because it's a solenoid or a circular wire, your finger shows the direction of the current and your thumb will point towards north. So which side I will have a north pole? Which side of this iron rod I will have a north pole, left or right? Which side of the iron rod will be the north pole? So when I apply the rule here, the left hand side, using a right hand rule, using a right hand rule, fingers point in the direction of the current and turn in the direction of current, thumb point towards the north. So left hand side, you will have north pole and the right hand side, you have, have south pole. Same way, you're passing a current in the second one. Again, when you apply the rule, right hand grip rule, fingers turn in the direction of the current and thumb will point towards the north. So with direction, you're using a right hand grip rule, fingers are pointing in the direction of the current and thumb point towards north. So again, north pole will be here and south. So you can see opposite poles are facing each other. So when opposite poles, poles are facing each other, what they will do, they will tend to attract each other. So as they tend to attract each other, what will happen to a distance between, a, between the two electromagnets or distance X? It will decrease as they will attract each other. A is the right answer. So first using a right hand grip rule, you have to identify the poles which are produced on the electromagnet having a circular wire or solenoid. And as the like, unlike poles are facing each other, they will attract. So they tend to move towards each other. So the spacing X or the gap of X will decrease. Question 26. A student investigate which end of a magnetic compass needle is attracted to a bar magnet. A compass needle itself is a magnet. 
So compass needle itself is a magnet means one side will be north, one side will be north, other will be south. So if we place both end of a compass needle are attracted to the north pole, that's wrong. Both end of a compass needle are attracted towards the south pole, that's also wrong. One end of a compass needle is attracted to the north and the other is attracted towards south. And compass needle not attracted, that's totally wrong because it is a mag magnet, permanent magnet. Question 27. Which material are the coil and the core of electromagnet made? The coil is a wire and electromagnet is to magnetize. So the coil is made up of copper and the electromagnet is made up of iron. A current carrying coil is, is in a magnetic field experiencing a turning effect. So variable voltage supply is there, split ring, basically it's a DC motor. How can a turning effect be increased? How we can rotate this DC motor faster? So for a DC motor, it the force experienced by the motor depends on how much current we are passing, what is the strength of the field? and number of the turns. So if we increase the number of turns, that will in increase the force on the coil. You, if you use a thinner wire, thinner wire will have high resistance. If resistance is high, the current will be less. So the turning effect will decrease. Reverse the direction of magnetic field, that will change the direction of the motion, but does not affect the speed. And reduce the size of current if you decrease the current less current means less force on the wire so reduce the turning effect we want to increase the turning effect that's why either use a stronger magnet use more turns or pass greater amount of current a transformer is to be uh, a transformer is to be used to produce six volts output from 24 volt input. So means it's a step down transformer. Uh, what are the suitable turn of the coil X and Y? Coil X is a primary and coil Y is a secondary. So we have the formula Vs over Vp is equals to Ns over Np. What is the ratio of the voltage which we want? Vs is six and Vp is 24, six divided by 24 means one by four. So we need, or one is to four is a ratio. So which combination is having a ratio of one is to four? And it's a step down transformer. So either A can be answered or D because step down, both are step down, but the ratio is this is 4 is to 1. Question 25, look for this question 36, the formula is Vs over Vp 
is equals to ns over np voltage of the secondary is 20 uh, voltage of the secondary is 6 and voltage of the primary is 24 so means the ratio is 1 by 4 so what we want in the question we need the ratio of ns over np so the ratio of ns over np should be 1 by 4 so when i take a ratio of this one this is ns x is np so if ns is 60 and np is 240 when i simplify this 6 divided by 24 or the ratio will be 1 by 4 so that's why a is the correct statement Small particles of the metal are scattered near a bar magnet to show a pattern of magnetic field. Which metal is suitable to show the pattern of a magnetic field? We need a magnetic material. If we use a non-magnetic material, so we cannot show the pattern of a magnetic field. So aluminium is a non-magnetic, brass is a non-magnetic. Means these materials cannot behave like a magnet. When we pass the current, there's a magnetic field around them, but they will not be a magnetic, magnetic material. So which material can we use? We can use iron because what will happen? Like if you have a magnet and I place iron fillings, so these iron fillings will show a pattern of a magnetic field. Question 26. A stronger electromagnet is used to attract the pins. What happens when the current and the coil is half? For electromagnet, the strength of a magnetic field depends on how much current is passing through it. Greater current means stronger electromagnet. Less current means weaker electromagnet. So what happened when the current of the coil is halved? So its strength will be reduced. And as the strength will be reduced, it will be able to attract fewer pins. Because strength of electromagnet decide how much or how many particles it will attract. Question 27. Four plotting compasses are placed near a bar magnet. Which plotting compass is shown? Magnetic field is always from north to south. So when you show the direction of the magnetic field, it is from north to south. So A is wrong because it should be opposite. B is the correct one because B is showing a direction same as a magnetic field. C is opposite. That's wrong. D is also wrong. It should be other way around. The direction of the needle should be same as the direction of the magnetic field. That's why B is the correct answer. Means when we plot the magnetic field, the compass needle point in the same manner as a magnetic field. So towards the south, it should be in and it should be out from the north. So B is correcting a, showing a correct position of a compass needle. This is an AC generator. So what could be the answer? 